Welcome to Millbrook and the Trevor Zoo. I'm Amber Hatfield, and I want to welcome you to this month's episode of Live from the Trevor Zoo. It's great to be with you this afternoon. I'm a sixth former or senior here at Millbrook School, and I'm graduating this month. It's hard to believe that my four years at Millbrook and my time at the Trevor Zoo is coming to a close, but I've actually been working at the zoo since before I even started high school, beginning when I was 12 years old, and I volunteered as part of the zoo's summer program. As a third former or freshman, I became a zooey like all my classmates. And when I started my fifth form year or junior year, I became a student curator. And this year, along with Peter and Justin, I am one of the head curators. Of course, working here at the zoo is a big responsibility. We are helping to take care of lots of animals. Many of them are endangered species. Some of them, like our red wolves, are on the brink of extinction. So when I say it's a big responsibility, I mean that in the most serious way. As we work our way up the ladder at the zoo, we learn about all the animals here and how to take care of them, what their diets are, and how to clean and maintain their habitats, and how to enrich their time with us. And being a curator means that we get to help teach the younger students how the zoo works and hopefully get them excited about working in the zoo and possibly becoming student curators themselves. The zoo is the largest part of Millbrook's community service program. Just about every day, something like 70 students come down, cross the road, and work at the zoo. All third formers are required to spend one third of their first year working at the zoo. Of course, some of them are just put in their required time and end up doing something else. But others like me were really attracted to the zoo in the first place and it's one of the reasons I came to Millbrook. So for me, the zoo has become a very important part of my time here and has in many ways defined my Millbrook experience. Frankly, I'm not alone in this experience. As others who have come before me know, the zoo and the opportunity I've had has been unique. I mean, no other high school students in the world can say that they went to a school that had an AZA accredited zoo as part of its campus and curriculum. From Dr. Thomas Lovejoy, class of 1959, who many know as the godfather of biodiversity, all the way to my sister Tiffany, who graduated in 2018. The experience of working at the Trevor Zoo day after day will change who we are and where we will go in our lives. When I'm not at the zoo, I like to play soccer and lacrosse, hang out with my friends, and I live, in, I live on campus at Abbott Hall. Next year, I'll be attending the University of Miami where I plan to study marine biology. Just a reminder, please feel free to ask questions throughout today's episode and type them in the comments and we'll answer them toward the end of the show. So because of my love of animals and my interest in science, I've spent a lot of time focusing on biology, animal behavior, and environmental science courses here at Millbrook. By the time I entered my sixth form year, I was able to participate in the independent science research course. The goal of this class is for students to conduct a real and meaningful research in a similar style as an undergraduate or graduate student would at a university level. The students in this class have taken general and advanced classes and are now able to apply those skills to their own research project. The course is run by Science Department Chair and Millbrook graduate herself, Ava Goodale, from the class of 2001. Students began working on their research in September and use a variety of our campus resources to collect their data. The student research projects are an expression of our science curriculum and the skills students develop through our courses. Last week, during the school's annual science symposium, the students who participated in the independent science research course shared their findings and answered questions about the work they pursued through the course of their academic year. The grand finale of this course, the science symposium, is where students are able to present as real authorities on their research. It is a proud moment for us and for the faculty who have helped us along the way. This year, there were seven students, including myself, who participated in the course. The subjects touch on a variety of interests across the spectrum of the scientific world. Sophie Stark's ISR grew out of her experience with the Millbrook Engage internship, wherein she volunteered at the Cold Spring Behavioral Hub, a community-focused mental health resource center. So Through her experience with mental health issues during a global pandemic, led Sophie to the topic of her ISR project, an assessment of COVID anxiety at Millbrook. Was Sam Smith's ISR project compared Millbrook's pre-COVID bacterial biodiversity with the amount of bacteria to be found now with health and safety um, protocols and in place to maintain the bubble. He honed his data collection and lab skills and also remained open to the possibility of answering a different question than the one asked initially. 
Olivia Charles ISR is an assessment of Millbrook's current carbon footprint and a detailed plan for how to further decrease campus environmental impact. Olivia's work builds on the legacy of environmental stewardship at Millbrook and provides a roadmap for future progress. Hannah Stewart worked with a college science professor to analyze thousands of camera trapped images of sauce captured in the Peruvian Amazon. Her ISR saw insight on how sauce perceive and react to danger in their natural habitats. Hanji Zhu has undertaken an especially relevant ISR project that investigates how smartphone screen time might relate to the visual stimulation users get from colorful apps and content. Her ISR saw a possible connection between screen time and color content, which may be the first of its kind, and Hanji is almost certainly the only high school student to conceive, design, and execute such a project. Anna Metzger's ISR grew from her love of architecture and her growing interest in sustainable architecture and green design. The Science Symposium included Anna's design for new sustainable faculty housing at Millbrook. Anna gained technical expertise and experience in assessing the needs of end users while developing her aesthetic sense. So today I'm going to share with you my research project and present it to you as I did during our recent Science Symposium and CES Festival which was the presentation of our culminating experience for seniors. For my independent science research project, NCES, I studied the effects of behavioral enrichment items on the cortisol levels in the black and white ruffed lemurs and ring-tailed lemurs at the Trevor Zoo through behavioral and fecal analysis. Enrichment is provided for the animals to prevent them from performing stereotypic behaviors such as pacing, vocalizing, and excessive scent marking. Cortisol is the primary stress hormone, which is spread all throughout the body and remains for a longer period of time compared to other hormones. I chose to focus on the lemurs for my project since over the summer during my Mobrick Engage internship at the Trevor Zoo, I created enrichment items for different species and found that the two lemur species were most interested and willing to engage in my enrichment provided. For my project, I designed a new enrichment item I wanted to create a new enrichment item that the lemurs had not seen before in order to hopefully have the, have the change in cortisol levels be more drastic and obvious. I did a lot of research on what the zoos were giving the lemurs for enrichment and found the idea of giving them a wooden box with three doors with three different types of latches on them. I tried to pick the easiest latches I could for the lemurs since they had not seen something like this before. During my internship, I also began creating and taking behavioral observations for the animals. In doing this, I found that the black and white ruffed lemurs performed the most stereotypic behaviors. They exhibited pacing, vocalizing, and excessive scent marking. I took the behavioral observations using an ethogram. An ethogram is a chart with the behaviors along the top and the time increments along the side. For the purpose of my study, I did every 30 seconds, so every 30 seconds for 30 minutes, I would scan the exhibit and mark down the behaviors that the lemurs were performing at that time. I took these from outside of the exhibits, and for the fecal analysis portion, I fed the lemurs each a different color, non-toxic wax crayon that was shaved down using a cheese grater. The wax crayons were completely safe for the lemurs to consume and were fed to them in order to identify each of the individual species. The fecal collection took a total duration of three weeks. The first week was baseline, the second was the enrichment item, was with the enrichment item, and the third was post baseline, so without the enrichment again. The enrichment was added three different days for 30 minutes. I collected fecal samples twice a day, once at 8.30 in the morning and the other at four o'clock in the afternoon. These were put in their own plastic bags with the name of the animal, the date, and the time. The samples were stored in the freezer until it was time to conduct an assay. An assay is a lab procedure that is conducted in order to determine the level of a certain hormone in an animal. For my project, we used Enzo's cortisol assay kit. In order to prepare the feces for the assay, I had to weigh 0.5 grams of each fecal sample and put it into their own test tube. From there, I put 80% methanol in it and put it on a vortexer for two minutes. After that, the test tubes were put in a centrifuge for 15 minutes, and this was to extract the hormones out of the feces. Then the methanol and hormone mixture was poured into a new test tube and put on a hot plate for about three days to evaporate the methanol and make the hormones more concentrated. When the mixture was concentrated enough, we began the assay. For the assay, we followed Enzo's cortisol kit instructions. Once we completed all the steps, we put the plate into the plate reader and got our results. A lot of data went off the chart since it, had, since it was much higher than we had anticipated, 
So we put in the highest amount of cortisol readable on the graph, though the true amount could be much higher. Most of the results matched up with my behavioral observations, but Maki and Billy's did not. Maki and Billy are both black and white rough lemurs and did not appear stressed in my ethograms. They were not performing as many stereotypic behaviors as Bombo, the other black and white rough lemurs. This could be because Maki was pregnant, which may have caused her more stress. On the chart, there's a red star on the day she gave birth. The next day, her cortisol levels decreased significantly. Unfortunately, I don't have any data past this date, but there is a chance her cortisol levels stayed low or they went back up. For Billy, I'm unsure why his cortisol levels were so high, especially since he did not exhibit any stereotypic behaviors. Bombo's results lined up very well with my behavioral observations, since during the baseline, his cortisol levels were high, and during the enrichment, they went down, and then finally during post-baseline, they went back up. This matches up with the behavioral observations, since during the baseline, he was pacing, vocalizing, and scent marking excessively, and when enrichment was added, these behaviors stopped. Bombo was the only lemur that was able to figure out how to open the latches on the enrichment, so that could also tie into why his cortisol levels were decreased. For the ring-tailed lemurs, their cortisol levels lined up pretty well with my ethograms, since none of them seemed stressed in the behavioral observations, and none of them ended up having high cortisol levels. Lorelai also gave birth on the day with the red star, and that's the only day her cortisol levels were high, which mainly shows how pregnancy is a stressful process for her. London was not pregnant, but had some high cortisol levels. This could be because she's the dominant one, and there could be a correlation between stress and hierarchy in lemurs. Foster and Jono both were not very stressed. Foster only had one high cortisol level, and this could, this could have been the day that Lorelai gave birth. Since many of the results went off the chart and I can't calculate an average, we calculated a percentage of high values. Comparing each of the individuals, the female lemurs have higher cortisol levels in general. It would be interesting to test these lemurs again, possibly over the summer, to see if it was due to pregnancy or if they are generally or if the females are generally more stressed than the males. Looking at the percentage of high values of each species, the black and white rough lemurs have much higher cortisol levels than the ring-tailed lemurs, which was expected because of the behavioral data. Overall, this project was very helpful for me to have a better understanding of the lemurs and how enrichment benefits them. I would like to thank Dr. T, Ms. Bennett, and Ms. Goodale for guiding me through this process and providing me with such a unique opportunity. If you would like to check out the full presentations of my classmates and watch the videos of their independent science research projects, you can find those on Millbrook School's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash millbrookschoolny. Okay, so let's hear your questions and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you have any questions about my research project, the science program at Millbrook, or anything about the Trevor Zoo, just go ahead and ask them in the comments here. Oh great, it looks like we have a, our first question. Catherine from New York would like to know why I use feces as my method to analyze cortisol levels, and were there any other sample methods you could have used in this study? So I could have done blood samples or saliva samples, but since our lemurs aren't used to doing that, I didn't want to change their cortisol levels in any way, so I just stuck with feces since it's a natural process for them. Silpa from Nashville would also like to know, what was it like going to a high school with a zoo? I really enjoyed going to a high school with a zoo since it gave me a preview for what I would like to do in the future and allowed me to see if I really want to pursue something with animals in the future, which I've learned I do. <laughs> Tiffany from New York would like to know, were the samples collected at the same time every day? Um, the samples were collected the same time every day. I collected them at 8.30 in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And this was just to keep it the same so that way nothing would change like the control variables. She also said, if not, could that be why some of the levels fluctuated so much? So since I took them at the same time every day, that wouldn't tie into why it would fluctuate as much. Kelly would like to know, will there be any future testing 
on the baby lemurs and as well um, would there will there be any future testing on the baby lemurs as well um, so I haven't really thought much about this there could be but I'm not sure at the moment well looks like that's all the questions we have for today So if you have enjoyed this episode, I'd like to remind you that you can all you can always view view our previous episodes from live of the, live from the Trevor Zoo on our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com forward slash Trevor Zoo Millbrook. You can also watch our streaming cameras throughout the zoo 24 hours a day at www.millbrook.org forward slash Trevor Zoo Live. Thanks for spending part of your Wednesday with us, and if you're in the area, please come visit us in person. It's easy to make a reservation at our website which is www.trevorzoo.org. We are open every day, and, we and we'll be back here live from the Trevor Zoo next month. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.